This is a $30 grow light, and this is a $300 grow light. Welcome back to the Mind and Soil Test Garden, and over the last month, I've tested not just these two, but five different light sources to determine how big of a difference it makes on the overall growth of the plant. And as a result of this experiment, I've already started replacing all the lights in my seed starting station. So to provide some background context, let's go back in time one month to when I kicked this experiment off. The first thing I needed to do was set up five identical sets of seeds. I used three inch seed cells in all environments and filled them up nearly to the top with my mind and soil seedling mix. Then I started placing the seeds into each seed cell and the crops we'll be comparing in this experiment include lettuce, basil, tomatoes, peppers, and broccoli. For the lettuce and basil, I just sprinkled a bunch of seeds in, but for the tomatoes, peppers, and broccoli, I placed five seeds into each environment so that we can compare germination rates from one environment to the next. And after that, it was time to set up the lights. Environment number one is the Sundico LED grow light. It comes in at a price of $30, and I really wanted to use this grow light because it's the very first grow light I ever used five years ago. I didn't get amazing results, but I wanted to utilize it because it's always the first search result on Amazon and has tons of five-star reviews. Environment number two is the Monios LED Grow Light. It comes in at a price of $75, and it's actually my favorite grow light at the moment. My second seed starting station is completely kitted out with them, and I've started all my seeds under them for the past several seasons. But I'm really curious to see how it does against some more powerful grow lights. And just for context, I'm setting all of the lights up the same distance away from the seedlings. Environment three is the Vivosun VS1000. It comes in at a price point of $100, and my hypothesis is that this light will produce the biggest seedlings. The reason why is because while setting it up, I quickly turned it on and was shocked by how much brighter it was than the Monios grow light. So we'll see if that translates to better growth. Environment number four is the Spider Farmer SF2000 grow light. And at a price tag of $330, this is certainly the Rolls Royce of grow lights. It gets incredible reviews and is definitely more of a commercial level grow light. So I'll be very curious to see if the plants put on significantly more growth to justify the 3X cost. I'm gonna put some cardboard right across here to make sure that none of the light from any of the environments is spilling over. Now the fifth and final environment is a grow light we all have access to, and that is the windowsill. The price is obviously free, but full disclosure, I am not a fan of this as a light source. And let me add some context to that. When I take my light meter app and I place it right over top of the seedlings in the windowsill, I get a reading of about 1000 lux, which I know from previous experiments is just not enough. And for comparison, the Sondico grow light, it only gives off a reading of 300 lux, so actually even less light than the light source. Now underneath the Monius LED grow light, that climbs all the way up to 8,000 lux. And again, that's the grow light I've used for starting all my seeds under the last two years. And then we move on to the Vivosun VS1000, that number climbs all the way up to 44,000 lux. And under the Spider Farmer grow light, it climbs even further to 67,000 lux. So we clearly have a big range in the amount of light the seedlings are being exposed to from the windowsill all the way up to the spider from our grow light. And I'm gonna be really curious to see what does that result in in terms of differences of growth. With that now complete, the grow light Olympics have commenced. Let's fast forward a few weeks for the first results. Okay, it is 14 days later and there are already some absolutely incredible results in this experiment. Now for this update today, we're gonna to be entirely focused on germination rates from one environment to the next. So to begin diving into that, let's take a look at the seedlings in the windowsill. As you can see, we do have some growth, but literally every single seedling is leaning towards the window, begging for more light. And we're talking about that more in the next update, but for right now, let's dive into those germination rates. I got all of your comments. I know that you don't want to hear me count every single seed cell up like Count Von Kant from Sesame Street. One bed, two bed, three, three fabulous flyers. Ah, ah, ah. So to quickly summarize them, for the tomatoes, 13 of the 15 germinated, for the peppers, eight germinated, and for the broccoli, 13 of the 15 germinated. Let's move on to environment number two, which is the Sundico grow light. So underneath the Sundico grow light, we also have pretty good germination across the board and also aren't seeing tons of growth just yet. Just hang tight until I show you the last two grow lights in this experiment and it's gonna be night and day different. But let's start diving into the germination rates here. 
for the tomatoes, 15 germinated, 11 of the pepper seeds germinated, and eight of the broccoli seeds germinated. Now let's continue along to the next environment, which is the Monios grow light. Okay, so now we're actually starting to see some really solid growth on the plants here. The lettuce is still looking really leggy over here, but everything else, the basil, tomatoes, peppers, and broccoli are all looking more sturdy and are starting to put out their first true leaves. So we're in a good place here. Now on the germination front, for the tomatoes, 14 of the 15 germinated, 12 of the 15 pepper seeds germinated, and 12 of the broccoli seeds germinated. And recall, going into this experiment, this has been my favorite grow light that I've utilized to date, but let's now move on to the Vivosun grow light. Okay, now check this out out so i am super super proud of this all of the seedlings are looking really good nothing is leggy and not only have the plants now put on their first true leaves but they also are significantly larger than those under the monios grow light so for only 25 dollars more i'm pretty bullish on this grow light at the moment there's still a lot left to do in this experiment but i'm pretty impressed now, let's dive into those germination rates here, beginning with the tomatoes. For the tomatoes, all 15 germinated. For our peppers, 13 of the 15 germinated. And now on to the broccoli. First and foremost, it is looking so good and healthy and happy. Huge leaves already on it, which I'm feeling really good about because I had a bit of a flop on this front with some leggy broccoli seedlings earlier on this year. But on the germination front, 13 also germinated. Across the board, that is really, really good performance. But now let's see how it stacks up against our $300 grow light, the Spider Farmer. All right, now take a look at this. Very, very nice growth as well. Very similar to what we're seeing underneath the Vivosun. I would say a little bit ahead, which makes sense because it is a slightly more powerful grow light, but not by a significant amount. And first and foremost, like this is again, such a big reason of why I love experimenting. My decision to spend all this money on grow lights, test things out against my previous environment has resulted in me finding two grow lights that are growing way better than my previous grow lights. So I already know that I'm going to be doing an upgrade on my grow lights leading into this season. And I'm gonna include links to all these grow lights down in the description of this video. But let's now dive into the germination rates for our spider farmer environment. For 14 of the 15 tomato plants germinated, 12 of the 15 pepper plants germinated, and 11 of the broccoli seeds germinated. So actually a little bit lower than the Vivosun, and that doesn't shock me because that Spider Farmer grow light was kicking off a ton of heat. And so the seedling mix was drying up way faster in this environment than any of the other environments. And of course, for seeds to germinate and begin growing, they need a warm, but also moist environment. And that might've been a little bit easier to come by in that Vivosun environment. And I think it's safe to say that now we basically have two leaders in the Grow Light Olympics here, the Vivosun and the Spider Farmer. So what I wanna do now is fast forward a few more weeks for the final check-in on the growth levels in all the environments. Okay, it is 30 days since we kicked the experiment off and this has been hands down one of the coolest experiments that I've ever run. As you can see, we have some very significant differences in growth and as we begin diving into the results, if you see a grow light that you like, I've included links to them down in the description of this video. So to begin diving in, let's start with environment number one, the windowsill. And as we can see, they're super laggy, they've barely put on any growth and they're all leaning in the direction of the windowsill. Now, granted, I don't have a true south-facing window, so it would be a little bit better in an environment like that. But if you're thinking of starting in a windowsill, please, please, please just watch the results for the next couple of grow lights. Speaking of, let's move on to environment number two, the Sundico grow light. And here we're seeing pretty similar results to what we saw in the windowsill there. Not very much growth. They're looking really leggy. And this shouldn't come as a surprise because remember when we put my light meter app under the grow light, we were only getting a reading of 400 to 500 lux and that was less than what we were getting in the windowsill. So plain and simple, this grow light just does not give off enough light for you to get thriving seedlings. So save your money, stay away from that one by all means necessary. But with that being said, the next three environments were giving off way higher readings. So let's now take a look at environment number three, the Monios LED grow light. And as we can see here, we're now starting to get into some pretty significant growth on the plants. So the tomatoes are obviously way larger than the previous two environments. The broccoli and peppers are starting to put on some really nice leaves. And what I will say is that the basil and lettuce is looking fairly leggy. 
And the reason why is because in this experiment, I kept all of the grow lights at the exact same height. And in this environment, it would have performed way better if I kept that grow light right on top of the ceiling mix. So if you do move forward with the Monios grow light, don't be afraid to keep that light only one or two inches above the top of the foliage. It's not going to burn them and you're gonna get even better results than what we're looking at right now. But remember from our last update, we kind of knew it was turning into a two horse race. So let's now take a look at the Vivosun VS1000. And now these are absolutely thriving. These are some of the best seedlings that I've ever grown. All of them are super, super short and putting on tons of foliage growth, not leggy whatsoever. Honestly, the basil is at a point where I could start harvesting it right now, only 30 days in. Now, what you're probably noticing is that I have removed the tomatoes and I'm just doing that for the moment because I want to show you something in a second after we go through the spider farmer environment as well. Now, when we compare the Vivosun grow light side by side versus the two previous grow lights, it is night and day different how much better these ones are growing. But of course, we wanna know how does this $100 grow light compare to the $330 Spider Farmer grow light? So with that being said, let's now pull out environment number five, the Spider Farmer grow light. And these have also done incredibly well, all of them looking super lush, healthy, and happy. But let's now put it side by side with the Vivosun Grow Light to see the differences. And so on my right here is the Spider Farmer environment, and on the left is the Vivosun VS1000. And as a matter of fact, over the last five or six days, I think that the Vivosun seedlings have actually started to grow a little bit bigger than those in the Spider Farmer environment. The butter crunch lettuce is looking a little bit larger. The basil has caught up and then the peppers and broccoli are nearly identical. So to put my money where my mouth is, I actually just bought three more of the Vivosun VS1000 grow lights. And if you wanna get your hands on one or two of them as well for this season, I've included a link in the description of this video where you can buy yours. Now, the final thing before I finish this video is why did I remove the tomatoes from the experiment? Well, let's pull them out to take a look at them. Now, take a look at this photo. On the left-hand side are the tomatoes underneath the Spider Farmer grow light, and the ones under the Vivo Sunlight looked identical. And on the right are the tomatoes that were underneath the Monios grow light. As you can see, the ones underneath the Spider Farmer and Vivo Sun were quite a bit darker in color, not as vibrant of a green. And so I was a bit concerned, is this an issue? So I reached out to my friend, Ashley, the soil scientist, who has an amazing YouTube channel, and she confirmed with me that it isn't an issue, it's just the plant's way of reacting to more intense grow light source could actually be beneficial in the hardening off process because it's now used to a light source that's more intense and closer to the sun so long as the leaves don't show any display of stress or burning and as a matter of fact over literally just the last four or five days I've started to notice the first burn marks on the leaves under both of those lights. So if you do get the Vivo Sun or Spider Farmer grow light, just be conscious of how far away they are from the plant. And with that being said, the next experiment that I'm kicking off literally when I finish this video is comparing those four Vivo Sun grow lights that I now have at different heights from the plants. So subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so that you get notified when that video launches. That's all for today. Hope that you've enjoyed this. I'll catch you on the next experiment.